PCK almost did not go on air. Low class, press, not speak English properly. Thousands of people start to go around to go oh, backstage. Wow. And then I realized, hey, somebody took my mode. <laughs> <laughs> I never have been able to say Happy New Year to my family. Do you really want my autograph now? My mother's dying. I was in ICU. He said, Mr. Singh, uh, not only do you pass out, your heart stopped. <gasps> oh, <gasps> gosh. <laughs> I think we're very curious about that. <laughs> what, like, the wig? Do you have the costume? Like, you know Batman? Like sometimes he- <laughs> <laughs> How dare you put Batman in the costume? <laughs> Life, he, he has time, so like yeah, he yeah. takes time off from being Batman, I, right? I used to have the entire <laughs> thing. When we finish uh, our PCK the season, right? Mm. Uh, I quickly wrote in uh, to P, uh, to MediaCorp and said, hey, I'd like to buy over because I'd like to keep him. And hopefully one day where for posterity, I can donate it to a um, mm. yeah. museum of sorts. Right. Yeah. And and true enough, a few days later, uh, uh, what do you call it? This uh, Madame Tussaud came in and they asked mm. for me to come in to do the figurine. Hmm. And it was quite an eye opener. You know, I, I'm down to my spandex only, you know. Hmm. And then I sit down there on a stool that rotates around. So the photographer comes around and takes pictures, multiple, multiple pictures all around, right? There's even a guy who's in charge of eyeballs. He opens a briefcase <laughs> and the eyeballs of different color and shape and comes to me. Right. Oh. Wow. Do you, does one yeah. get paid? For huh? that? No, no, no. It's, a, it's an honor, right? Yeah. And then there's yeah, one guy sure who that. takes a caliper and he measures. Right. Measures what? Your wow. Nose, oh, okay, okay. Your eye to your ear, blah, blah, blah. And I just think that. So four hours of this is going on. And then finally they say, okay, we got it. Then they go back to France and they start doing it. And then as they proceed different milestones, they send us the pictures to see if there's mm. anything we want off. Then let them know, then they will quickly do the change. But mm. they ask, you know, like if you could, all the celebrities will give something of their personal, either from the show they are famous for or a personal apparel or, mm. you know, accessory. Mm. So uh, Mediacorp uh, manager was then, they said, oh, we'll, we'll have to talk about that, check with management, there may be some charges involved. Yeah, mm. Like, are you nuts? I want to charge them too slow. So I quickly said, no, 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 actually uh, it's funny you should ask because I have the whole set from head to toe, the fingernail, the mold, oh. the, the gold, everything, boots, How all that. How the fingernails thing? Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 it was oh my God. <laughs> Can you show the camera please? <laughs> Mind blowing moment. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to grow it. My wife said, oh, You want to sleep in a couch? I said, No. Um, and I gave everything to them. And now he is wearing the outfit uh, in Madame Tussaud. And, oh, and it's wow. very nice. I went there for the opening and then I went there a few more times. And then the feedback has been from the staff. They said that. Uh, Portugal is the most molested figurine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because every morning they come in, they have to adjust, yeah. and then they'll see all these lipstick marks here. What an honor. Oh. And shit like that. And, you know, that yeah, I only yeah. happens in real life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's another story altogether. <laughs> do you want to just go and stand there? <laughs> no, I did. No, I did. Mean, uh, the right? No, I did that. I, I actually went to stand there <laughs> because the, the figurine is on the sofa like this, right? Mm. Ah, so we, they took the figurine away. I, yeah. I did this. Yeah. So people sit next to me. Yeah. Hey, hello, you what? <laughs> <laughs> but they over here trying to kiss you. Then. <laughs> yeah, so they come like, like, <laughs> like more. So yeah. every time when you when you use like the Patron character, like say in live shows or whatever, yeah. like you always have to ask for permission, la. Yeah, because the rights belong to the TV station. Could you buy it from them? That rights, that IP, would they sell it? I don't know. I have never tried. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you can buy it for like a like a temporary base, like a form yeah. movie and all that. But, mm. but otherwise, no. From uh, what I've heard though, if had you bought for it, you were more than paid for it already. Oh you know, yeah, I mean, if yeah. I was in the States now and I have royalties that come to me, yeah. in Singapore, there's no such thing as royalties. Mm. I, I would have made a fortune. And yeah. uh, every time they show the, the character or the episode, I wouldn't have to work for the rest of my life mm. based on the popularity here. Mm. So I'm actually curious about the origin story of the character because based on what we've tried to research, <laughs> tried to research. You, you based it off a character that you created during Gurmit's world. Yes. And the characters that you created during Gurmit's world were somewhat based off of Relatives. Your relatives, relatives, or people that you knew personally. You forgot everything. No, you no, said no, 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 no. <laughs> so, is, so my question actually is: Is there a real life person that you base Pachukang off of? Uh, Pachukang is based on somebody that I worked for in secondary three holiday job thing. Ooh. So there were two brothers. <laughs> one can speak English, another one cannot speak English. Ah, right. He had a beer belly. He had gold tooth. 
And then he had, you know, long hair, straight hair, but then curly hair here, oh. rings and everything. Uh, and his punctuation marks were not exactly the same ones we are used to because they were all the Chinese vulgarities. Uh, oh. that was his mark. Okay. He starts talking about your mother first, then he says what's wrong. <laughs> and then he says to your mother again. <laughs> you know? So you do that all the time, but he can't speak English. So th there was one time where a few of us were having a lunch break and they were laughing and all that. He came into the room and then this is what his attempt to speak English was. He said, laugh what? Laugh your sister no hair. <laughs> <laughs> like, deep, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> I turned to my friends who are Chinese, Cantonese, I said, so what does that mean in Chinese? Is it? They said, don't know. We try to say maybe Hokkien cannot, Cantonese yeah. cannot. So, so, like, so today I don't know what he means. Uh, laugh your sister no hair. Yeah. It's probably a very ancient Chinese Tang Dynasty problem. There. <laughs> so I, I, when we were huh. doing um, uh, Gurmit's rule, uh, the relatives come because the concept of the story was that Gurmit the presenter of the mm. show, Gummit's World, has all these relatives. Mm -hmm. But they were not actually my real relatives. La. And then we we brainstorm about how we can come up with different characters. They said, let's do a contractor. Then I said, actually, I used to work for a contractor and I share my experiences. Right. And mm. uh, we just gave him our version of that guy, you know, the way he walked. He used to walk like that. He's like larger yeah, than yeah. life, you know, Smith. <laughs> LC, right? So of course I see that in, 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 in TV, right? But, yeah. uh, but the, the essence, the aura was that, you know, and it was very serious. Some people think it's just a, oh, a fluke thing, but we actually sat down and seriously discussed. <laughs> and this is what some people don't understand that sometimes comedy is actually very serious business. Mm. So we sat down and said, okay, so we have the basic skeleton. How can we make him a bit more, a bit more TV, a bit more, you know, mm. relatable to the point that we talk about is more. Where should the mole be? Should it be here? Should it be here? The reason why we thought of a mole was because he thinks he is God's gift to women and the world. He's perfect, right? But he has a mole on his face. <laughs> and if you put it here, he can't see the mole. <laughs> <laughs> so he is perfect. But actually, this one here, you can't see, people know you're perfect. Oh. Yeah. Then we discussed, should we have a strand of hair coming up? <laughs> so across the table, we all said, no, it's a bit sleazy. Uh, focus oh. group say it's a bit sleazy, a bit pervert. Mm. not approachable. Take out the mold, suddenly it becomes cute. <laughs> focus groups oh. it. Wow. So we, we did that. These focus groups are like members of the public or within the TV station? Within TV station. Okay. We get a few people coming and say, hey, we're gonna do this, check it out and see what, what you think. So when the show came out, did, the, did that contractor say anything? Or well, because yeah. he don't I've, understand I've never English. met him, I've never seen him. Oh, I don't know. Okay, like when okay. he start yeah. watching it on TV, then he's like, oh, so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't exactly follow him, but he mm. he inspired me to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But there's a whole demographic, yeah. la, that oh. like that. I think my father yeah. used to Yeah, I mean, those days, the contractors were like, contractors were like that, right? so mm -hmm. it wasn't difficult to, no, but just that I shared this mannerism, the way he mm. talked, yeah. budget we, and life. A bit like a medium, no? Imagine we sit down, all the TV producers, they just talk, how about he? Then you you know, you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> then you reveal to yourself. That was good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was damn funny, huh? We briefly yeah. touched on like the use of Singlish. Like, were you surprised that it wasn't like it, it like the IMDA or whoever at that time like let yeah. it pass? Because like, when we spoke to Digley, like one of his albums got banned because he had too much like colloquialism. Mm, but yeah, it was right? actually Pachukang that then suddenly lifted the ban. Yeah, but within the first season, we we got banned again. We see you, ladies and little boys who have been leaving a lot of interesting, thought-provoking and sometimes unhinged comments on our YouTube comment section. So we're excited to be launching our brand new Daily Catch-Up community on Telegram. Yep, so it's going to be a place where you can catch up with us, dive deeper into the topics that we cover on our episodes, share with us interesting insights and connect with us on a whole new level. And you might even be able to influence future episodes. Actually, not might lah. They will lah. They will. Exciting. Yeah. Plus, we will also be organizing meetups and sharing exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. Okay. So I didn't know that part. <laughs> scan the QR code right now or click the link down in the description to join us and start messaging us because yes, John yes. Paul is already messaging. Pasta, pasta. Comment here. I will see. Tuck, 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 tuck. Nobody, no, commenting. No, nobody commenting yet. But it's okay, join us. How, what they saying? Not, wait, let me check. Is this how you see the comment? No way, don't have it. Is this you? Should I, should I just start? I comment first? Yeah, then, then I can help you to thumbs up. What should I say? Hi guys. But what about the girls? Wait, wait, I think Dan is replying. <laughs> he is typing. I wonder what they're gonna talk about first. <laughs> you think they'll comment on the episode? I hope let's see, so. Let's see. 
Somebody's typing. Is oh. Is then. Oh. Hey, faster, guys. <laughs> maybe, mm, maybe, should, I, should I ask a question first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that when they come in, they have something to reply. Oh, then send a row of ketchup bottles. <laughs> I, come on, guys. Don't leave Dan hanging. I reacted to okay, it. Okay, yeah, I also react. <laughs> I put the puke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy oh, somebody... Re- oh. oh, no, that's you. Oh. This was because of a parent who uh, complained in forum. Usually is. Uh, yeah, and then <laughs> make some noise. And when people talk to me and say, hey, the Pachukang is a Singlish show, I say, yeah, it is. And I tell my kids that when I watch a show with them or if they're watching a show, don't follow this. It's only for entertainment, mm. right? So there was one episode I showed them and I said, this is Papa working and this is how I speak because it's funny, but not how you do it in real life. But other people, you can talk like that if you want to, right? <laughs> but the problem was that because you got famous, right? Mm. Uh, children started using the phrases and talking like him in school mm. and the, all the teachers got worried. Uh, it's like when I was young, I watched uh, Bruce Lee. Mm. The next day I went, what ah, yeah. what ah! Mm. Then suddenly what, you ban Bruce Lee, you don't write. Mm. Uh, but that's what happened to Puan Chukang. So don't and, pray pray la. Uh, don't pray pray. Or even the Singlish, I had more la, me, everything. Right. So all that, all that cancel, cannot do that. Did you come up with thank you, you? No, I didn't come up with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I still use it. Remember, no. Yeah, thank yeah. you, you. <laughs> Not my mother. I think my so mother gave me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, like, like that la, which is so essential for a Singlish yeah. phrase, yeah. right? Couldn't be used. And after the end of season one, and then we, we the minister brought it up into, uh, in, a National Day rally speech and then we were told we had to tone down everything. But uh, we realized that even if you take the Lars away and you do the sing song the way that Pacha Kang talks, mm. even if it's correctly, grammatically correct, you can still make it, make it feel work. like yeah. a... Oh. The funny thing was that when this happened, when I was banned from singing La, at that same time, I was doing a fundraiser dinner at uh, Kuala Lumpur and the uh, guest of honor was then the Prime Minister, Abdullah Badawi. Mm-hmm. So Portugal comes on stage and say, hello, uh, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, my Prime Minister already uh, say uh, hello to you. Uh, but uh, sorry, uh, no, uh, in Singapore, uh, my single is uh, cannot bend. Uh, so I cannot <laughs> say the la, the me, the ho, and all that. Uh. I'm very sorry, uh, uh, Prime Minister Abdul Badawi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt like I could, I, you know, you read the room, right? I think yeah. it was okay. It was a bit relaxed. And then I said, you don't mind, I'm Prime Minister, because I cannot. Huh? Very hard for me to say, I'm Brad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when I'm hungry, I want to eat the, the hot hot, I want to order sa. <laughs> Are you preparing for these kind of performances with like a team of writers? No. So you're writing all, all of this? Oh. I don't even write. Oh. I often. Oh. oh. So I always, uh, uh, wow. Call me over, over religious or whatever. I pray before I do a show because I, I don't know how I'll do it. I don't yeah. know how it'll turn out. Even if I have a set that works and I'm using it again, the audience is different. They're bloody different. I don't know where they came from. Maybe <laughs> half the room is being divorced right now and they're yeah. angry, right? People, <laughs> who knows? So when I go on stage and I do so, this type of thing like that, the Badawi thing, I didn't think of that until on the spot. Yeah. Oh. oh, so when he came out, right, after the show is over, I go to the room on one corner and I thank him. I say, that is you. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> and go be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are the greatest comedian because wow, where did that come from, right? Yeah. Must wow. be oh, that racist joke wasn't it? How dare you listen to your shit? But were then were, were there days where like you really just bombed or like just didn't go well? That is my biggest nightmare. Which hasn't happened yet, touch wood. Wow, because I wow. always think, what happens one day I go on stage and I don't deliver, I don't perform, mm. I you know, blacked out or something, like just uh, uh, suddenly the joke juice is out. The hamster wheel is not running anymore. Yeah. Then what? That will be the pff, scary. It's a very scary thought. It comes to me once in a while. Does your, does your children, have they watched PCK? Do yeah, a few episodes. Do they, they think it's funny? Yeah, they're okay, but they're not like big fans. I yeah. think it's like that when, when it's in house, like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, they, then, then they watch High Five. Wow, High Five. <laughs> <laughs> Disney, Nickelodeon. <laughs> but to follow up a bit on what Dan shared, right? I think maybe one of the more nerve wracking moments for you was when you had to go to Malaysia. Ooh. 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 upstairs. Take a Tahoe break. Oh my God, Tahoe break. Yeah. <laughs> oh, King Kong. I mean, you were well loved on both sides of yes. the causeway, mm. right? Yeah. And 
the Singaporean government actually asked for your help to yes. help to ease some of the tensions. Mm. About the water, right? Yeah, could yeah. you share a bit about that? There was a PCK becoming an ambassador without him even asking for the job. So, like you said, back then there was that, and it comes back and forth, right? The water mm. issue mm -hmm. thing, how much to charge, you don't enough water and all. And that particular uh, time, the Chinese New Year and the Hari Raya uh, sort of were falling the same week. So in Deng Dengar Bay, I think they call it, uh, there's a JB by the water side. They had a huge carnival, right? Mm. Uh, thousands of people there. The ministers from uh, Malaysia were going to be there. They had invited the counterparts from Singapore to be there as well. Then after that, they hoped to sit down and talk about this water issue thing. I didn't know anything about it until finally I one day got an uh, email from the Prime Minister's office, we want Patrick Kang to go over to when the show is there, there's performances on it, we'll get mm. you a slot once you go up there and um, you know, try to ease the tension about the water politics and all that. Wow. I was like, what? I, I'm a, a comedian. <laughs> 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 so it was a Friday, I remember. And on Fridays is when we do our studio uh, recording and we will always shoot in front of a live audience at 8 p.m. We'll start from the first scene all the way to the end. But that day we pre-recorded everything and then by uh, six something, seven, I will, I had to go straight off. Mm. And because there was no time to change, I rushed off as PCK. Mm. So when I reached customs, <laughs> <laughs> I'm PCK. Uh, uh, my passport is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so Prime Minister's office, to their credit, gave me a letter to say that they match. Yeah. Mm. And I gave to them. Then you can see the Singapore one, the customs officer, very professional. Please go ahead. The Malaysia one, hey, what you got here? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Show us, show us, show And then at the end of the Causeway at Woodlands was a traffic police waiting for me. Wow. So they escorted me, got Water me to the kid. back of the back of stage, and I still don't know what I'm doing, except I know that I'm gonna sing Stand By Me because it's it's fun. I play as a song, but I also do it as a game. People come mm. on stage and sing. Mm. Now what happened was that as I'm about to go on stage, it starts raining. I said, shit, now I can't do anything because people are going to go away, right? Mm. As I go on stage, they say, Pachuka, and I come up, oh, everybody is there. Oh, mm. They don't move. So you can imagine like a padang filled with people. No? Yeah. Mm. Um, and then PCK uh, says, wow, I really very horny. I mean, horned. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> then, ah, you're running, running, ah, you're still stand here. You're wet. Ah. Wow, I tell you what, you're wet. Ah. I also wet. That's why I stood on the bass uh, speakers, right? Which is outside of stage, in yeah, front of stage, yeah, right? Yeah. Usually the bass speakers yeah. are there. I stood there and I got wet too also. And I said, wow, I tell you, ah, this is what we call brother and sister. Lah. You look after me, I look after you. Lah. Huh? Don't care about water, no water. And it's funny, ironically, yeah. with water coming down. Right? <laughs> uh, and then I said, you know, we are like brother and sister. We should take care of each other. Huh? I love you. You lah, we love you, Portugal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost thought I was going to be elected as a minister. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, the way they were going. And then I sang Stand By Me. And when I sing Stand By Me, I, I sang as not Portuguese, I sang as Gabin Singh. Wow. So I love to sing, right? Mm. So they were very happy, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, hey, everybody take care. And then I'm shortening this because it was all jokes in between. I go backstage and these thousands of people start to go around <gasps> to go backstage. Wow. And we were totally unprepared, right? And I suddenly see this hot people. So me and a few managers start running and I run the best because I'm wearing boots, right? <laughs> 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 And then we just rush into a, the finally the transportation, the van, and people like oh, 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 Beatle Mania kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And then I realized, hey, somebody took my mold. Because <laughs> <laughs> people were pulling my shirt, they were doing this, they were trying to coat my, my hair and all that. They assume it was fake, huh? Oh, it was real, it was really hot. <laughs> 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 yeah. Blood. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty cool. Uh. That was damn cool, uh, what yeah. the heck? Yeah. Service, eh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, we were uh, email was sent to us saying that uh, minister's office said thank you very much. Uh, PCK did a good job. Not Gamin, uh, PCK did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Gamin? I don't even know who is. Um, Give him a and bonus. PCK did a good job, and he really helped us to break the barriers. Wow. And we had a good uh, meeting after that. But do you think there was an there is this weird added pressure onto you, right? Because it's always like when SARS come out, then they have to do the song. Then recently with COVID, then you also <laughs> yeah, yeah, to do the song. Someone said to me, they said, they said that the PCK probably is the only pandemic rapper. I don't see the stress because it's not like I'm trying to sell a, 
uh, number of vaccinations and then hit the uh, uh, KPI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel honored because uh, back when we go back to SARS, there were a lot, myself included, not sure about what is right, what is wrong. Because we have platforms, we have social media, we don't know who is saying the right thing and the true facts, factual stuff. So back then the government was thinking, what can we do? Uh, they didn't want to do a little preachy talk down to you kind of thing. These yeah. are the facts, these yeah. are your brother. Yeah. Say, who can we use to be the ambassador? And they said, let's use BCK because he'll be able to deliver it lightheartedly by yeah. And will transcend all the ages and the cultures mm. and the languages, you know, because uncle, auntie, all happy, mm. happy him also. Mm. And it was uh, well received. Uh, and yeah, so it was more of honor than anything else. So when uh, COVID came around. <laughs> COVID we were thinking, you're like, No, I was like, I wonder if they're gonna, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Presumptuous, right? Yeah. Mm. But fair enough. They they what they <laughs> what they did was they used Portugal, but they didn't do any rap, any MTV, whatever. They did a uh, piece to camera kind of thing. Mm. So he would come in and say, uh, "Hello, everybody. When I you see uh, a lot of people together on one bunch, please, uh, don't go near. Stay far, far. Ah, that's it. I you. Ah, get out. So just right. normal stuff, right? Yeah. But mm. short clip, short clip. Short. <laughs> when he came, when he came I'm out, so, right? I'm so starstruck as you. Just like normal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so when he when he came out, right? The thing was that the government had, before they launched the videos, they had put yellow boots and then a blue screen. Yeah. Oh. And netizens went, wow, mm. the rap is coming. Yeah, yeah. The rap yeah, is yeah. coming, the Korea rap. When the piece of camera came out, they're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was they one of those. You want to down with the government. <laughs> so they were very upset. So within the, the first few days, uh, we got an email and said, hey, come here, come here. okay, we're gonna quickly uh, turn this around because we're getting all negative stuff. We're gonna write a, a, a rap, we're gonna shoot an MTV, like the SARS thing and all that. So like today I got the words and today I was in a studio what is what's the what's the melody? Huh? Okay. <laughs> and then the next day, tomorrow, Whoa. I was in the studio shooting for twenty two hours straight. Oh, oh. and oh. I hardly learned my lines right because I just did it yesterday, yeah, yeah. right? So I have to ask the floor manager which two lines are we doing because we do bit by bit, right? Mm. These two lines, okay. I have the iPod. <laughs> okay, ready. Oh shit, I fluff. Okay, I do it again. Twenty two hours later, oh. Then we shoot. Then uh, three days later, four days later, out in the air. That is all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy like to please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that too, but I know I'm just grateful that they you know, they, they they welcome him with such open arms. They give him such a, such a I don't know such an honor. How mm. how does it feel to be so closely related to that? character of yours mm. like does it do you think of it positively or negatively oh for sure positively many a reporter have tried to say hey Gavit Singh uh, you know we understand that till today you're still doing Porsche Kong do you feel typecast so first I say it's no I don't say that of course <laughs> I say that this is how I see it I see it as half filled because we as actors as performers always are looking for something that we say I did this right mm. I own this I will go to grave with this. Yeah. Mm. But many of us, after we pass the novelty, we'll go around and say, I, I wish I could do something else. Like, mm. it's a bit uh, yeah. getting old of me. I will never get old with Poetry Fan because he paid the rent. Yeah. <laughs> he sent my kids to school, mm. you know? Fair so enough. I have to, I'm internally grateful and I, I always have fun. As PCK, there's never been, except for the Singlish, never been a, 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 a critic, criticism about him, you know? He can make fun of ministers and get away with it. Mm. Yeah. You know? And then I invite the minister up on stage. The minister will say, oh, why do I have to follow off the PCK? I, yeah. I cannot match the <laughs> thing, you know? Or like, for example, if I invite a minister, please come on stage now for your opening, uh, your, your, that one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he's walking faster, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they laugh. Yeah. They laugh because you know, because they, I think PCK has become something. And somebody will say he's, he's, he's irreverent, but he is safe. Mm. Yeah, he's safe. You know, you know, it comes from a good place. Mm. So people just lap it up. So we have a community channel on Telegram where people kind of get exclusive content or get to ask certain questions to contribute to our episodes. Oh, and so wow. we did tell them you are coming onto the show. Hmm. And one of their questions was, what is, who is your favorite cast member to work with on the show and wow. why? Wow, 
that's hard, no? You have to pick one. They ask the tough the, questions. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but my philosophy always has been, and this is what I said at the final farewell episode of PCK, mm. where we sat down and talked, you know, reminisce, nostalgia, the past episodes. I've, I've always felt that every component of that show was vital, mm. down mm. to the lighting, the camera, the uh, props, the wardrobe, the makeup. So when I went on stage uh, to receive the Asian Television Awards five times, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mentioned all these guys as well, mm. because yeah. I always feel that doing a show is like a huge puzzle. And one piece, if it's missing, you know, if it's a 10,000 piece and you see one piece missing, it's them and I saw, right? Mm. But when everybody works together, it really blooms. So at the at the final episode of the Bye Bye Farewell episode thing, mm -hmm. I told all my cast members, I said, thank you for putting me on a pedestal and making me shine. Thank you for wasting your time on me because wow. they were all established. They could have done something else. They could have done lead roles in other things, but they stayed and they made me, you know, funny. They make mm. PCK, you know, really stand out. And only because I had the support. If the supporting actors were assholes, <laughs> You know, not delivering the lines they're supposed to do or trying to steal the limelight kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Which never happened on PCK. On PCK, mm. it was such a fun, bloody fun. If you came on the set, right, you would seriously doubt, are these guys working? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> they're being paid. Uh? Because we'll play pranks and all that. Like, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. We're shooting in a studio house. The scene starts with the door being flung open. Police comes in. Police! Two policemen come in in uniform. They'll be, oh, 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 then the scene ensues. So we rehearse a few times in front of the audience. Then we say, okay, let's go for a recording. Okay, stand by everybody. And then uh, close the door. Oh, I say, I close the door for you. So I close the door and then I lock the door. <laughs> 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 this is where your childhood then experience I, comes yeah. in. <laughs> I tell the audience. <laughs> and then three, two, one, action. Go out! <laughs> 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 hey, who locked the door? Hey, locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun. And but then uh, when, when we rehearse in a studio, I mean, uh, a rehearsal studio, after we rehearse, we don't go back. We play, we sit around, we play charades, we play soccer, oh. we book a few glass, oh. glass mirrors in the ballet studio, but <laughs> play football. That's uh, very serious charades yeah. you are playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, so, and do you think that you need to kind of have that kind of environment going mm. in order for a funny show to be what it is? I think it's the opposite. No, I think you can't force it. Somehow, by God's grace, everybody that was part of this project gel, worked together so much so that after the rehearsals, we didn't want to go back. We just mm. want to enjoy each other's company. Okay, we done some work. Wow. Let's play a bit, you know, mm. and we'll play charade or we'll make fun. And during rehearsals, we'll have fun too. Like for example, if I'm talking to Pierre, and the camera is on Pierre, right? Oh, I'm so honored that I'm Pierre yeah. in this situation. And then, and then I'm not on camera, right? So I said, I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so what he's trying to say is line, I'm supposed to feed the lines, right? Instead I do this. <laughs> you know? Or for example, I'm supposed to say a line to him that he was supposed to say, uh, Chukang, I don't know what to do, right? Then I was supposed to feed a line, right? So instead of saying, don't worry, Chubeng, I will help you. I'm your bigger brother, right? Instead of saying that, I say, Chubeng, you have a small penis. But the camera see it. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Cut! <laughs> so so I, always, I always tell them, I said, I do this uh, with love because if you can still perform mm. given all these distractions, <laughs> then you're at the next level. <laughs> Fun, we know because okay here's the thing we do all the fun thing but we come back serious and do the job we deliver so that's right. why the director and producers knew that okay mm. we, we can so even in sunny side up it's a mm. drama mm. for goodness sake it's a drama but i'm still playing a fool because mm. i found out in a, many years ago when I, early years i found that when you have an environment that everybody's laughing and enjoying themselves the creativity juices flow yeah. like you know there's a mm. bonding not flooding huh? bonding bonding <laughs> yes bonding because if you have a tense environment even the guy has a fantastic brilliant idea how this thing can go, he won't open his mouth. Yeah. He's scared of being talked down. Mm -hmm. right, right, and you right. miss that opportunity. How different do you think it is being a director versus the acting now that you've gotten to try both? It, uh, it's a different apple. Huh? I mean, as an actor, I have to surrender the vision to the director. Even though I have, I'll say my two cents and say, I think maybe I should do this way. If the director says, mm, no, I think you should do this. Okay. Mm. Yeah, under my breath, asshole. But <laughs> I'll still do it because it's his vision. Yeah. The communication between director and actor is very important, right? 
so I've learned that and Sunny Side Up characters, uh, the actors told me uh, that they felt I spoke their language. Right. So if I tell you to do something, I will say the way you would hear yeah. it so that you will know and mm, deliver. Yeah. They say, you tell me, I understand, I do. Other directors tell me, I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Mm. I remember this one director in, and we had so much fun with her. Me and Pierre, right, in PCK. She's a uh, university honors, whatever. Like. So her vocabulary <laughs> uh, is like, what, crass. <laughs> her vocabulary is very good. No? So one day she came to, to the two of us, we were doing a scene and she said, okay, that was quite good. Uh, uh, Gabi, Pierre, that, that portion there, this lines, can you be a bit more languid? Let me like, what? Mm. <laughs> languid, L-A-N-G-U-I-D, I looked it up. Yeah. Wow. Then I said, oh, okay, okay. And then I turned to Pierre, you understand what she says? Then we said, no, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is it or, or more, more flowy, not so, oh, okay, 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 thanks, thanks, thanks. So after that, we keep calling her Languid. I see, when you're you language, 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 language. Yeah. What, what was the, the hardest or most challenging aspect of, or maybe it was a time hmm. during your career uh, in acting? When my parents passed away. My mom passed away in 2001 through uh, cancer. Then two years later, my father passed away in 2003. And it's the hardest time, four years of my life, because when you're a comedian, mm. I expect you to be hey, joke, mm. joke, 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 joke. Uh, and I couldn't, I was very down. But when I go in front of the camera, I'll perform, but as soon as the camera is shut, even more introverted, more reclusive than ever, because I was fighting, I was crying every day in my car, mm. Mm. whether I'm going to work or whether I'm going home. Some people come to me and say, hey, how come you so, so moody today, why? why? But because they don't know my, you know. Mm. So when my father passed away, I was receiving my ATV awards. I was also receiving uh, Star Awards mm. for top 10 most popular. Mm. So I used those two platforms to announce. I said, I'm very sorry. I, I, I love this award and all that, but my father just passed away. So for the next, I don't know how long, I won't be the happy go lucky Gummy you always see because I'm trying to adjust. I'm trying to grieve. So I hope you give me space. I'm not trying to be rude or, I'm not trying to, you know, be Tao or whatever proud. Mm. So round of applause, all that. But of course not 100% of the population watch Star Awards or ATV Awards. So when I go on the streets, hey, come here, what's so moody? Joke lah. Mm. Then I have to like, I have to pull back my tears and I say, hey, okay, come. You know, then I do oh. a joke. I took two weeks off when my dad passed away. And then we were doing the PCK musical and there was a line where PCK has to say, well, oh, I tell you all, last time my father, oh, he didn't, didn't. I couldn't. Oh, no. I, I told the director, can we change this line? Or can, we, can Rosie say the line in mm. a different yeah. way? They say, yeah, okay, can, can. So it's very hard. It was, um, when you're a comedian, um, so I, I always have told myself that as soon as I step out of my house or my car, I am public property. And rightly so. When you see your, your, your celebrity, hey, you want to greet, right? Mm. And you greet back, you don't be an asshole, right? Yeah. But if I'm not in the mood for that, then you won't, I won't come out of my house, I won't come out of my car. Yeah. You know, drive through, don't get out to the restaurant mm. or the- You clock in when you leave home. La. Yeah, yeah. Did it feel upsetting that you even had to announce this in a sense? Because for a lot of people, this is just something that happens in private, right? But yeah. because like you said, perhaps you are in a sense public property, yeah. you have to be accountable to the masses. It wasn't about accountability. It was because of what I learned from my mother's uh, passing. When she passed away, I didn't make such announcements, right? Mm. Everywhere, left, right, center, people expected me to, hello, hello. You know, when my mother was dying of cancer in the hospital ward, the chief nurse, I was there with my family. The chief nurse came and said, come in. Sorry, can I see you outside for a while? I said, oh no, what happened? So I walked outside. And then she said, hey, uh, some of the nurses are taking a picture with you and autograph. <gasps> I stood there for like eternity and I look at her and say, do you really want my autograph now? My mother's dying. And she said, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I say, it's okay. So I, yeah. all these little pockets of things, I said, people don't know, I don't blame them. Mm. It was hard, but I also don't blame them. Yeah. So when my father passed away, I suddenly clicked, I should yeah, not do that again. Yeah. Try to uh, work around it. Mm. <clears throat> but I guess it's also nice to, have a platform to then make sure your right. father is remembered and, and to kind of announce his, his end of life to yeah. on TV. And the other thing to deal with that was the paparazzi. When, mm. when, when my mom passed away, there was the paparazzi outside the, the church, the funeral, and I never invited them. And so somebody came to me and said, hey, there's paparazzi outside taking pictures and all that. So I went out and I said, what are you guys doing here? I, this is a funeral, this is not an event. Mm. I don't need you to publicize. 
no, no, Gabi, we're just here to take some pictures. And I said, no, give me the camera. Give me, I want you to delete it now. And I snatched the camera from the cameraman. And then the producer also started, you know, pulled up, pulled up, pulled up. Mm. And then finally we broke apart. And then I called the CEO of Minicom. And this will be, I want to mention Ernest, uh, Ernest Wong, I think his name. Yeah. <laughs> Wong, Young, Wong, Wong. No, 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 we got your disclaimer. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I call him and say, sir, this is what's going on. And can you help me now? He said, don't worry, I'll call. And uh, he called SPH mm. uh, chairman and relate to him that if you pursue this, we will have to take legal matters in our hands. Mm. Wow. So nothing was printed. Then two years when my father passed away, the caretaker, was it caretaker? Undertaker. He said, uh, sir, outside got cameraman and all that. I said, okay. So I crossed the street, the three gentlemen with cameras. I spoke to them nicely. I said, gentlemen, this is a private thing. I don't need you to take my pictures. You don't have to do this. Can you please go? No, Gabi, this is very good uh, because we want to take a picture for that. No, no, I said, no, no, please. Will you go so that I can grieve in privacy? No, Gabi, come, let us take some pictures. I said, I'll count to 10, uh, I'll count down from 10. And by the time it's over, if I still see you here, I'll break your bones. Wow. So I started shouting, I shout out loud, 10. And by now there's a crowd coming out, nine, mm. eight. And then it's not moving back. Mm. Mm. So I didn't like that part of me. Uh, I used to be a very aggressive, angry boy. And, but I, I guess that sort of uh, broke the camel's uh, back like the straw. That, mm -hmm. And I had to show, because the, people are so used to me being easy going, jovial, you know, everything just flows out like a duck's back, right? Um, but I had to show them, no guys, this is real. This is not Gurmit mm. the entertainer. This is Gurmit the, the personal real guy. And do you think that helped you going forward when you had to draw more of a line between work and family as well? That was actually, you know, when I left in 2014, it didn't happen like in a short space of time. Even in 2010, I was thinking about it as well, what mm. to do. But you know, I, I had been doing it for so long that I didn't know what else I could do. My, my worst fear was that after I leave Mediacorp, I get no calls, I get no jobs. Right. Mm. Then what does my family eat? Grass, you know? So I was very worried. I, I told my wife, okay, maybe the worst case scenario is I work at McDonald's because I love filet of fish <laughs> So I can eat it every day. <laughs> <laughs> but what about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like filet of fish But you know, after I left, uh, I left in December and the next month, January, the email came in and they said, hey, come here, we got this project and this is the details and all. Are you? And then the last line on the email, has never been there in the 20 years. And the line was, are you available? Oh. oh. Because in the past it was instructional. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. They knew my my private calendar. Mm. Whether oh. I mean, for someone's wedding or someone's birthday or some my family's birthday or whatever, they knew all that already so they could walk around that. Mm. Uh, which they didn't, which is yeah. So I, I got a lot of uh, my, my children's milestone missed and everything. So yeah. that was always eating me inside, you know. So mm. when the when the third one was born, I was like, man, this is gonna happen all over again. Mm. They really need to do something about this. So we decided that, okay, we'll, we'll just bite the bullet and go. But before that, uh, this is my wife. My wife said, you know, and my wife is amazing. She said, look, both she and I came from a poor family, HDB. She said, tomorrow, if you end up at HDB, we won't die because we've been there. Mm. So I spoke to my, my uh, son and my daughter, um, at 10 and 14. I said that, uh, you know, this is what, daddy is thinking of doing, but there's going to be some sacrifices. So my, my son asked, uh, what sacrifices? <laughs> so we always travel business class and my son loves business class. You know, sit down, <laughs> it falls, da, 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 da. Yeah. then you call the stewardess, thing. hello, can I have some milk? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. watch the, for the next 12 hours, I wouldn't see him, you know, because yeah. he's sitting by himself in his own world, watching mm. all the movies he wants to watch. So I said, we'll never be able to take business class. We have to go economy now. And then my son said to me, Dad, if this means you have spending more time with us, then it's a no brainer. Wow. Wow. Mm. wow. Damn. Cry. No, cry. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, okay. Another one that we cried was, you know, I've hosted the countdown show 20, 20 years and um, I never have been able to say happy new year to my, yeah. to my family because wow. by the time I finish, the roads are released, crowd is gone, I go home two o'clock, three o'clock. Yeah. Mm. That one, that one year, 2014, December 31st, we were on a plane from the Arctic Circle back to Amsterdam. Wow. We stood in the aisle and I hugged them and I said, Happy New Year. Mm. And uh, we all just, yeah, enjoy that moment. Wow, well, I remember reading that on that day also. Wow. Mm. Because it was, it was, it was almost a New Year's 
tradition that no matter what we do, whatever party we had, your yeah. voice is in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. You wait, you know, you're not watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. Get you know. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the, the the first year without you, it was different. The vibe was different, and right. my family was like, we're, com- "We're complaining a little bit. Something's off." And then something's I remember off. seeing that exactly that story in in mm. I think in this magazine yeah. or something yeah. like that. You yeah. were explaining that yeah. this is the first time in twenty years I was with my family, and you were like, "Yeah, yeah, la, I, you know, a few Fair years enough. after doing this, I told I told the media corp, I said, isn't there any other host that can count backwards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they, they joke, no, Adrian will count 10, 9, 7, 7, 5, 5, 2, 9, 10. Oh, that's why they never called you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit curious, right? Um, because your youngest daughter was actually born around the time when you were already taking a step back from media corp. Do you think she saw you as a father very differently from your two elder children? My older two, right? They've always seen me as a... Uh, as uh, this superstar celebrity thing, right? Mm. And in fact, my eldest, when she was about eight, nine years old, she was interviewed by a magazine and asked, what is it like to be a superstar's daughter? And she said, my father to me is like a mythical creature that I hardly see. That That really, till today, I still remember it, Mm. you know? But this is the same daughter that wrote to the forum page and stood up for me when she was 12 years old and bombarded a new paper article who said I wasn't good enough for my talk show and all that. Mm. Oh, and it got wow. personal. And she said, you don't know him personally. If you want to attack his performance, that's fine. But don't talk about him as a father. Mm. Don't say it's less of a person or less of a father. And she's only 12 years old. She wrote it without wow. telling us. Wow. So my, my wife was reading the papers. Did you? She said, yeah. You know, she stood up for me. Wow. Um, when the, the youngest was born and I was you know, sort of semi-retired. <laughs> my elders said, it'd be so weird, right? Because she's going to grow up thinking this dad doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just hanging around. No you, know? <laughs> this is, you know, this bitch bum. This is not <laughs> you know, Why is he just hanging around? Why is this? Uh, People just want to take so you know? <laughs> you know, yeah, Why is he so clingy? Why can't he just go and work like other daddies? You know? What's wrong with him? Yeah. Yeah. And now the joke is that, you know, I made time for my family, but then sometimes like, uh, Sometimes I get up and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to spend time with family. And I'm like, oh, you're going out? I say, okay, that's no, So are you, oh, you're not, today you're not, okay. <laughs> so how about the two of, the two of you are going, <laughs> I'm alone at home. <laughs> <laughs> call me, call me, hey, hey, hire me. <laughs> I'm, I'm available, available. I'm available. <laughs> so I, I, I tell myself, okay, now I know how you guys feel. Touche. <laughs> Two can play this game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I miss so much of their milestones, their birthday, their wedding anniversaries. You know, all missed, mm. all missed, yeah. Well, what was the biggest lesson that you think being a parent has taught you? Be a parent when you're young, as young as you can. I think a lot of us, I think that's why we have an aging population, right? That we are taking so much time to focus on the savings and the career that when we finally want to have a, a be a parent of a child, we suddenly find that oh, it's very tiring, it's very old, it's, I'm very, too old for this now. Mm. Yeah, because you are too old already. I think when you have them younger and you start with basically what my parents did, you know, they, they didn't have much, but they were there for us. That's more important than anything else. You know, mm-hmm. you can have so much money in a bank or whatever career you have, but if you're not there for us, it's, you know. So my mother uh, gave birth to me when she was 17 years old, mm-hmm. you know, and that's pretty cool, I thought. So yeah, be a young parent. I, I know it's hard in Singapore because it's the standards, the cost of living is going higher. And one day when I become president of Singapore, I'll change all that. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. is shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now that we've spoken about quite a range of things, right? Children. From your personal life to career to even family. Mm. How do you think you want to be remembered, right? By Singaporeans or perhaps by fellow entertainers and then by friends and family? Wow. Uh, f- for Singaporeans as the best president of Singapore. Okay. <laughs> that, that really campaigning this. Uh, I know I am. Like, yeah. Okay, I had this I believe in you. you. I really oh, believe okay, in thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. I got one. Yeah. <laughs> And then you say that. <laughs> because I, I uh, this is what people have told me. They say, you know, you go around Singapore, 
what you're doing now is exactly what ministers do, which is wave, <laughs> take picture, <laughs> hold a baby, guess of honor, sign autograph, <laughs> guess of honor, cut ribbon, all that. You should be a minister lah. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to be a prime minister because I don't think I'm clever enough. I don't have that, that, that. but a president, I'm not saying he's not clever. The president <laughs> is more of a people person. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a symbol of the, right? He's between the government, as far as we are concerned like in Singapore, mm-hmm. you know, in the US is different, yeah. but in Singapore, he's the, the bridge between peoples and the government. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very important. So people tell me that you're already, you know, I do SARS, I do COVID, so <laughs> I might as well yeah. you know, be the president. Plus, in the Istana, I, I, I kid you not, there are two durian trees. Oh, that's wow. good. Now. What will we do with this yeah. piece of information? <laughs> <laughs> become a president, so yeah. you do durians. But if you become president, <laughs> yes. can you still play Pachukang? No, la, why? Oh, cannot really. La. Like, what if they need Pachukang back? Or for some? another pandemic? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or like That'd a water so cool. dispenser trying to sign in as a product ambassador. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my fellow Singaporeans. Yeah, do do it. Wow, that's like uh, desperately. <laughs> water dispenser. <laughs> ambassador for a straw. Okay, so, <laughs> so president to Singaporeans. Yeah, president of Singapore, best president of Singaporeans. And to other- To entertain, to yeah, the yeah, colleagues, to peers, uh, a giving um, collaborator. Mm. Mm. And to the family, um, a good dad and a good husband. Mm. That's present, all. right? A present father. No, oh, but I was absent for the longest time, so I've been trying to catch up. So when I got uh, off at 2014, I started trying to uh, do holidays as a family, but also individually. So like with oh. my son, we went to Bali, oh. um, just, just the two boys, you know, me and my eldest, uh, she was studying in the UK, so I went up there and then we did a road trip, uh, 21 Ooh. days, eight countries, 8,000 kilometers. Wow. Yeah. Enjoy it. Oh, I love driving. Dude, you don't, I don't think you've met anybody who loves driving more than oh. I, because <laughs> I love to drive. After I finish work, sometimes I just drive around Singapore. Wow. <laughs> that to me is the downtime. Right. We went to the States uh, for a holiday and we went to Vegas and instead of me at the LA straight away, I said, hey, let's drive around the Grand Canyon. I drove for 17 hours. When you talk wow. about drive, right? Are you on a motorbike or are you on- Car, your... car. Okay, no. okay. So what, what do you drive? My family car. Don't wanna say. Don't wanna say. Yeah. Yeah. But I ride a Harley Davidson. Yeah. Hey. 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 Cool. It's, a child, yeah, it's cool. a childhood dream come true. Yeah. Speaking of driving, you spoke about the first car you drove in this book. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> the house like of Charade. Why do you bring that up? I was trying to come out and say it. I was like, what was I thinking? That's a book on that's not available anymore. Yeah, he brought yeah. it to share with us. And yeah. we are going for a bidding price of starting from 10,000. Yen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might be autographed, haven't back yet. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I just want to present you guys this. Oh, uh, you can you. keep it in office and thank use it for much. that or whatever. But can you share one of the stories from here <laughs> that some people might not have heard of? Well, what I would say about this book is that when the publisher came to me and said, uh, you know, could you write a book? I said, I'm not an author. I said, oh, actually, okay, then you can write a book about your 20 years in Major Corp and what happened behind the scene. So I said, I'm not a bitch. I'm not a bitch. I said, no, like, I don't like, I did this, I did this. Like, Ooh. I said, no, I don't like that. That's so negative, right? There's so mm. much negative in the world already. So they said, how about writing a book about fatherhood? And I said, okay, great. There'll be a leaflet. Because yeah. <laughs> I was an absent father, yeah. right? So I told him, why do I write a story about my life from the day I was born till present time? There's no right or wrong. It just happened, it happened. If you can get something from me, take away something from there. I'm happy, you know, yeah. the most here. So it starts from, the book starts from the day I was born. How you remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the video camera. <laughs> no, my mom told me the story, la, mm. you know, how she mm. was labor for so long. And she, I say that in the book that she grabbed the doctor's thigh and say, where is it coming out? <laughs> and then she relished the thought of how he was so scared of her. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> my mom is really street street smart and uh she's she's really you cannot you cannot play a fool with her. She's gangster. I remember <laughs> when I was gonna be twenty one years old, right? I was in a bus with her and sitting next to her, I said, Hey mom, uh, I'm gonna be twenty one in a few days' time, I'm gonna be an adult. She said, Yeah, yeah, a big boy, big man, huh? And I said, Yeah, yeah. So 
since I'm going to be an adult, then I guess I can make my own decisions. <laughs> she, looked at me, she looked at me and said, you try. Uh. <laughs> she doesn't know what you want yet. <laughs> yeah. So you try. Uh. I said, okay, no, I won't try. <laughs> uh, and then I tell the story about how, what was school life about? So basically I follow the track as I'm going to primary school, kindergarten, primary school, secondary school, pre U, mm. try to go to university twice, cannot get in there, <laughs> can't make it. Then the Hopa Villa stories and all. Mm. Um, the publisher wanted to get me a ghost writer, which I was very thankful for. When I told my wife and my daughter, and my, my eldest daughter is already a self uh, published author of two books. Yeah, oh, the, the two wow. of them are, well, they can talk about books like, until like, you know, pigs fly. <laughs> so I told her, I said, hey, I got this deal, you know, like it's ghostwriter. My wife said, there's no way a ghostwriter and my daughter agreed can get capture your voice. You must write it. I said, me write it? No, la, I don't, that, that one, la. Mm. Then my wife said, no, <laughs> you were right. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote it. What happened was that I was, I'm going around my business every day. Suddenly there's a memory of primary school, for example, mm. I quickly put my iPhone, mm. jot down the notes, mm. come back home and write, write, write. So every month I give one or two chapters. Wow. Every month. So this book took me one whole year to write. Wow. wow. Okay. Uh, so even the part about writing about my parents passing and all that, even when I was writing it, I was so choked up with emotion. I actually wrote in a book, I had to step away because mm. I can't write anymore. Mm. Mm. So I took a few days off oh. and I came back. Yeah. And then there are some, there, there were some things I wanted to do, which the publisher didn't allow me. <laughs> Which you can say now. Yes, I can say now. Let's go. Yeah. So for example, I wanted to publish the book upside down. Because <laughs> 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 that's the only thing to do, right? <laughs> the said, no, you cannot because it looked like we made a mistake. I said, no, my fan base will say, this is so gum mm. <laughs> I said, no, no, you can't do that. Then I said, okay, how about I, how about I print uh, every page seven, page seven. <laughs> 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 so like, don't know what it is. Oh, <laughs> it's me, you know. They have to keep rereading. <laughs> <laughs> the publisher, <laughs> like, this one. Hey, uh, then, book like, which page are you on? <laughs> seven. <laughs> seven. Yeah. But the retention rate is very high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then every chapter is also page seven. Chapter seven. seven, seven. <laughs> then the other thing I wanted to do was the letter I, the pronoun I, mm. small I. I actually sent it in there. Then they said, was there a mistake? Why you made your pronoun I small? I said, no, purposely do it. No, like, it looks like a mistake. Mm. Pronoun I should be capital letters. I said, but do you want to know why I'm doing that? Okay, why are you doing that? Because I have infinity complex. Oh. So I'm not a big eye, I'm just a small eye. Mm. 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 I say, wow. No, cannot. And there was a word I wanted to say, I want to emphasize the word long, L-O-O. -O. So I put two, uh, 13 O's, long <laughs> time, right? In the commas. Come in, you can't do that, why? Again, people think it's a printing mistake. So if I want to emphasize that really long, not just, you know, long, oh, you do three O's. Oh, this is oh. even more obvious, right? It's a printing mistake, right? If you put 13, you know you purposely. <laughs> Supposed to three, uh, three O's, you know, you know, you do it yeah. thirteen times. It's purposeful, yeah. right? It, so it's weird, uh, but uh, eventually, you know. I hope you get to do everything you want in your next book deal. No, no, no. no. <laughs> the, the, the book took a lot of me, so I, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to overstay my hospitality. People read the book; they say it's nice, it's fun, and then just okay, quit while we hit. That's why we we stop PCK when it stopped mm. because I didn't want it to be a show that was axed. Yeah. Because it was starting to dwindle in ratings or dwindle in flavor, or what have you. That, that's the worst thing you can do to any project, right? We stopped this, but we continue with PCK Syndrome Barahat because it was still so big in Malaysia. It is mm. incredible. You know, when I go to Malaysia to stay there, right? I have security guard outside my hotel wow. room. Ooh. And then I have traffic police. I have security guards following PCK. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I don't think of policeman. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't understand also, but he, he, he is so big there. And when I went, the first few times I went to, to Malaysia, KL, my friends told me, they said, oh, the PCK show uh, is very funny, uh, but it's damn bloody long. I said, what do you mean, what do you mean bloody long? It's a half an hour <laughs> comedy show. No, it's one hour. One hour? How do you do one hour? They all oh, show two episodes together, is it? Oh, yes. Oh. No, they show only one episode. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes is a sitcom. 10 minutes is usually the uh, ads. ads. But now they show 20 minutes of sitcom and 40 minutes of ads. Oh. <laughs> so my Malaysian friends say I can go make coffee, make a baby, come back. <laughs> it's still the ass. The baby grow up really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Because I, 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 I grew in Malaysia, I'm Malaysian, and I remember like watching you on box sets. So like my friend, we would pass mm. around box sets. Like, sorry, you never buy our own. We used to like, do that. Like the, the yeah. tape. DVD. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And so in the tape, there'll be two episodes in one. Yeah. So then we were like, watch back yeah. to back. Yeah. She wouldn't have gotten paid even if you bought. Yeah, that's why yeah. I realized. Yeah. Yeah. It's alright. Right. Okay. Yeah. When we were preparing for this episode, right? Because I didn't grow up in the era when 
Portugal was at its peak. Right. So then I was asking them like, what was what yeah. was it like back then? Like, I want to know what was the phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And then he was telling me about this. And then I said, actually, right, how does the re- tape recorder work? Then what? I don't get it. Like, I put in a blank tape. Then it copy what is on TV and it can play yes. back to me. The cassette used to do it as well. They, they copy the song. No, but how? It's like I talk, then it gets printed onto the... Yes. Exactly. And the funny thing is that the tape, right, is a brown <laughs> flimsy thing. And most of it on the top is just rust. <laughs> That's why it's brown. That's why it's brown. Yeah, it's rust. <laughs> they use the, the carbon and the rust to oh. compress your- Oh, it's oh. You, you look at the technology behind it, you're like, can me? Exactly, yeah. that's why I was it's so like confused. Copy the table, hello. <laughs> <laughs> the table say, yeah. hello. <laughs> it's, I, I, I read the, the, the details and I, but still, how does it work? Yeah, I still yeah, don't yeah. get it, right? It's like magic, some yeah. voodoo Actually, what baffled me, right, was that live TV came first before you can put things in a CD. Because oh. it was much easier to broadcast on the spot and then yeah. pass it over. But uh. to put it in a box where I can play anytime I want. Yeah. yeah. That technology came much later. Wow, that I, I know some grandmothers, they watch the TV show for the first time and then say, how did the people become smaller and go inside? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they're, like, yeah. they're like, because they watch, they watch Teochew Opera, right? It's mm. life-size people on mm. stage, right? You know, there's this medium <laughs> yeah. and the people come inside and they're <laughs> 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 I mean, you mean to watch TV, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say though, those guys who Photoshop my face onto whatever body. Yeah, look at that. Quite real, huh? Did you have to <laughs> ask yourself whether you were arrested? <laughs> <laughs> no, my friend texted me. Yeah. Bro, prison. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, no, I'm okay. You never you're okay. Uh? I said, yeah, I can text you back. So I'm not in prison. <laughs> <laughs> How does one even begin to panic over this? Like, what was the feeling it's when not, you saw I, this? For me, when I saw this, like- It's funny lah. It's funny. Because not only I've been through this, uh, Mark Lee has been through this, Fandi Ahmad has been through this. Mark Lee actually did a police report. He lodged a police report. So I said, oh. how did it go? He said, the police say that the IP address keeps bouncing around. Like you see in the movies, right? Yeah, There's yeah. no mm. pinpointing down this address and then go and arrest these five people and bring them to jail. They're just moving around. It's digital. This is the new digital uh, crime that you want to yeah. you call it that. But, they did a good job. You know they where, did my, a good yeah. job. The, where the, my neck, I don't know if it's even my neck, but where the neck joins the the the, the body, right? It's just, so actually, <laughs> yeah, I see yeah, like, on social media, I say, praising the scammer. I told, yes. Yeah, I am, I am. I mean, give credit where it's due, right? <laughs> yeah. So I actually took a screenshot of the picture. I put it on my social media. I say, hey guys, friends and all alike, this is not me. I was not arrested. It's just somebody trying to clickbait you. Yeah. If you see a click, don't click there. Mm. Then I say, but side note, the guys who did this Photoshop, did a very good job. Yeah. You could work in Infinity, you know, uh, uh, Lucas <laughs> Entertainment or whatever. This is the original photo, by the way. Oh, you got the original photo? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, this is a tattoo. Uh, <laughs> no way. It, really? <laughs> got yeah. it, thanks, thanks. Uh, let's start with my nose booger. Mm-hmm. What, um, what does so it mean? 2001 was the my mom's 20th death anniversary. Right, mm. okay. So I tattooed her. This says BBG, my dearest mother. Mm. Ah. And then two years later was his Papa G. Right. So Are these the only two tattoos you have? No, I have a tattoo of a oh. cross. It's in a book of my back. Yeah. And uh, it's a it's a cross with the names of my family members on the cross. There's, there's a lot of photos, but uh, <laughs> I was trying my best. Yes. <laughs> Never mind, yeah. I don't want to commit when I'm oh, you, you know why I put photos there? Because I can't read a book without having pictures every five. I agree. <laughs> yeah, so that if I don't fall asleep. Wow. Oh, yo, yeah. with really? the long hair. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, that's a very tight shirt. Yeah, yeah I really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this book is uh, completely sold out already, um, but it's on its third reprint. So if you are lucky, you might be able to cope the fourth reprint. Mm. Oh, no chance, man. Got chance, like. Oh, wow. No, no chance. This is oh, the last. You, you found it. Ah. Oh. Wow, who's the tattoo artist? This actually was from Hong Kong. He was in town. I went to, oh. in Holland Village and spoke to, the guy who did Adrian Pang's uh, tattoo and oh, he said, oh, I, I wanted a, a, like a 3D kind of thing. Yeah. And he said, oh, I can't do this bro. But the guy is in town, he's doing a workshop thing. Uh, Sunday come down, I book him for you. And I had to sit down for five excruciating painful hours mm. uh, to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, the next yeah. day was going on back to Hong Kong. Wow, so one session. Yeah, I just sit down freehand. Six, six, six. Okay, so a question from our community. Yes. This person got good English. What? Many what? say- Christ, uh. You mean the others? <laughs> no, this one. Many say surprised. PCK is Gurmit's Magnus Opus. Oh. Are there oh. any other roles or works he would like us to pay more attention to? Oh. Basically, as an actor, I would like you to pay attention to all my works. Because, you know, we, we knew we had a good show, a decent show with PCK, but we didn't know how good it was. Mm. You know, PCK almost did not go on air. Reason being, there was no budget. 
no funding. Mm. You know, when, mm. when a project is approved, the sales team will go out and look at, uh, go to corporates and say, hey, we got this show and da 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 da. Would you like to buy a slot? Would you like mm. to sponsor a show? Mm. Every, each one of them said no. Because oh. the branding wasn't our image, blah, blah, blah. I mean, low class, crass, cannot speak English properly. Which company does resonate with that, yeah. right? Yeah. To the point where our, our, <laughs> our press conference was done in the studio instead of the usual Four Seasons Hotel or Shangri-La Hotel and all that. Mm. And then we got the drinks from the canteen with Tetra Packs and all. And then when we sat down with the reporters, they said, oh, so cute. So you want to be like Heartland? Is it? Yeah, yeah, Heartland, Heartland. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then when we, we didn't have the budget, so we didn't have a space to rehearse, mm. a proper studio. So in mm. the first few episodes that we, rec we rehearsed, we rehearsed in a storeroom's storeroom. Oh, wow. mm. So all we had was a, a small room like this, with a one by one uh, window opening. That was about it, mm. dusty like hell. And I remember the time where we felt a bit like, you know, this is not very nice, right? We're trying to do a good job and you're giving us this yeah. uh, second class citizen uh, treatment. The producer said, you know, I know I feel you, but I think we have something decent. Let's just push on. And then hopefully the show will speak for itself. Mm. So back then under one roof was the king of comedy and they won the ATV awards for best actor, actress and show. Mm. And the first uh, episode that went on air meant that we were already bleeding the the station because mm -hmm. there's no funding, right? No budget, mm. yeah. no sponsorship. But at the same time, we submitted a tape for actor, actress and show. Mm. And that year, the ATV, we beat Under One Roof. Wow. Mm. Under One Roof was unbeatable. They were a mm. household name. They also had their own Beatlemania kind of thing when they were going in Orchard Road and what have mm. you. And for us to beat them, it was like uh, people like, you know, stood up and looked like, who, what show is this? Yeah. And in the, in the next season, we immediately, we got over-sponsored. Oh. Over-sponsored because- The Motorola phone. Ah. Yes. Oh. The, big, the big Motorola phone <laughs> yeah. with the, the brick right. tongue was a Samsung actually. Oh. Uh, it was, it actually built one uh, for, especially for contractors because it was hardy, it was waterproof. You can throw on the floor and it wouldn't break. Oh. You know? So it was very relatable, right? But I say over-sponsored because when you see a commercial break that they have, let's say there are four slots. First three slots, you, you buy the ad. Yeah. Airtime. The fourth slot is always kept by Mediacorp to show what show is coming up after the show is over. Yeah. That slot was taken up as well. Wow. Right. Mm. Which you never have done before. Mm. Yeah. So suddenly we became, yeah. And the rest is history as they say. So I say, watch any show because we never know when is the next big one. Mm. So it's more pivot, but do you actually have any contractor skills? <laughs> I love to do hands-on stuff, but I've also made a big hole in my house and then <laughs> ruptured the water <gasps> supply Also you pipe. try, eh? I try. <laughs> like, hey, so like, the whole living room. Oh no. Your wife no. Why don't you just get help? Then you're like, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know Because I haven't. <laughs> One last question. If there were ever a young Pachukang spin-off, who would you like to play young Pachukang? <laughs> Oh, wow. Ooh. I don't know any young actors to begin with, so. Just a very old guy pretending to be young. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be me. Uh, <laughs> the aging. I don't know who would be. I, I will say this though. I've always thought that if Adrian Pang played Portugal, he would have done a very, mm. even maybe better job. Mm. I have utmost respect for him, for Mark Lee, uh, because they are so in their game. They're so versatile, especially Adrian. He's so versatile, my God. Mm. I'm even surprised I have a career with him around in Singapore. <laughs> but, uh, and he's a good guy on top of that, mm. you know. We've sat down and talked and yeah. Did you have a mentor when you were starting out? I had a mentors when I ate. Then, uh, <laughs> no, but my, my, my idols were the, the Hollywood, uh, Jerry Lewis, uh, Robin Williams, and uh, Jim Carrey. You know, because I like I like uh, over the top physical kind of humor. Yeah. In my first year, when I was doing my comedy roles and all that comedy bits on TV. Uh, MediaCorp told me and said, you know, you're very funny. People like you and all that, but can you make your your humor more intelligent? <laughs> I said, how do you force that on me? I'm only A levels, right? So yeah. I said, this is how I am. And if I try to be intelligent, I look stupid. And then yeah. the jokes will fall flat. Yeah. Oh, I would think that you will mention like Rowan Atkinson. Mm. Because a lot of people draw parallels to him yeah, and Mr. Mr. Bean, Bean and you and Pachukang. Oh, really? And you're both like cars also, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. He's a metro <laughs> hit too, right? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought of that. It's just the, I think for like Jim Carrey, Jerry Lewis and Romulus, they're really big and loud. Whereas mm, yeah. Rowan Atkinson is a bit more subtle and mm. uh, he's mm. Mr. Bean, although he's still physical. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a different kind of edgy, I guess. Right, yeah. right. So we've come to the end of a very fun episode with Gummy Singh yeah. and it's time for painting, painting of, of the, the episode. episode. Then do the honors. And meanwhile, let me share about how the Daily Catch Up is proud to be supporting Shaping Hearts. So Shaping Hearts is an inclusive arts festival that showcases works from artists with disabilities in Singapore. And today's work is by... Lim Kim Lai. So this is her painting. It's called Sakura's Embrace. I can see that. Mm. <laughs> it's quite interesting yeah. because of the framing and all that. The foreground, I can see it. Yes, artist terms. So Miss Lim, her life took an unexpected turn when in her mid-twenties, she actually lost her ability to walk without assistance mm. due to an unforeseen uh, circumstance. But through that challenges that she had, she actually found her passion for painting. And mm. so now it's her source of um, expressing her creativity. Mm. Yeah, and it, it really shows. The colors really pop in this one. They so if really you're looking do. for a piece of meaningful art, especially to support local artists with disabilities, do check out Shaping Hearts on the 19th of October at our Tampanese Hub. We will be there and we hope to see you there. Thank you. Put a painting back. I will. Okay, so thank you very much for watching today's episode. And of course, a big thank you to President-elect Mr. Gumi for joining us. Vote for him. Uh, the book is out, but no longer for sale. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, so the weirdest so book to us <laughs> If you like to purchase this book, you can. <laughs> so please, don't buy. <laughs> don't try. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. bye. So, do you enjoy doing podcasts now? Because you've done quite a few in recent years, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's cool. It's a cool platform. Because we've also interviewed like radio hosts, and you yourself, you did radio for quite a while, right? Oh, a year, yeah, a year think, and a bit. How do you think this compares? This is less uh, stressful because it's not done in the morning. <laughs> I know, morning person. Do morning one, uh. I, know, I know I'm a morning person, so I cannot wake up if the sun is not up yet. So to do the morning slot was so, so counterintuitive. Mm. You know, my brain shutting down, like don't do this. So to, I, I had to leave because I had this episode in 2017. So I'm sitting now, phone rings, I wake up, I, I pick up the call. And then my wife says, hey, where are you? I said, I don't know. So she said, what do you mean don't know? I said, I'm in a room full of lockers. I look around. Mm. She said, yeah, you're next door in the gym. You're supposed to come over now and we do a couple spa. Then I said, I have a gym membership. She said, <gasps> yeah, you have a gym membership. Yeah, you have a gym trainer. I have a trainer? Yeah. And we came here this morning. How did I get here? We came here this morning. I did. And I kept asking the same questions and she realized something's off. So she asked me to come out. I had apparently finished working out. I was all showered and changed except for my socks and shoes. So I went to get that got into the car, we canceled the couple massage. And in the car, she said, I kept asking the same 10 questions. So she said, okay, he's not going home, I better bring him to the hospital now. So we went to uh, Glen Eagles. On the way, we call, she called a doctor friend and then she referred us to a neurologist. Oh. And then checked us in. He talked to me and I, I shared with him uh, that I used to pass out because I had low blood pressure. So maybe in the shower, I hit the head or something. And then they touched, no, there's nothing there. Uh, no bumps, do an MRI. But I said, because you're faint, let's go send you to a cardiologist, see if there's any rhythmic problem. So what they did was a bed tilt test, they call it. <clears throat> you lie on a bed, they strap you up because then the bed comes up mm. and you are facing like this, like this close, you're facing a white wall for 30 minutes. Uh -huh. And because they do, they do that because then after, that, after 30 minutes, you are like so subdued and bored like shit, right? Your heart rate is really calmed down. Then they put a little uh, liquid substance in your mouth and that just jump starts your heart. Like you're just running for fear. You're sprinting now with uh, Usain Bolt, right? And you're running for your life. Now, 5% of the patients, the heart can't take it, they'll pass out. Then the bed will go down, the blood will come back up again, and then you, oh, woke up, right? All right. So they gave me the substance and I felt like I was going out. I said, hey guys, I, <laughs> I didn't even finish the sentence, right? Mm. And then I like, when I woke up, I saw I was lying down, doctors and nurse. And I turned to the doctor and said, oh, I guess I'm one of the 5% who passed out. Mm. And then he, he said, Mr. Singh, uh, not only do you pass out, your heart stopped. <gasps> oh gosh. For more than 30 seconds, we gave, you gave us a scare. We had to do a CPR. Tomorrow at the sternum, you'll feel pain because we were pumping you. Uh, you passed out at 132 beats per minute. That's all we know. So immediately I was in ICU for 24 hours. And for the next 48 hours, I was in high dependency. Now for the first 24 hours of, my, of that portion of my life, I cannot remember. Mm. So the neurologist said, you will never be able to remember. It's not like a memory that's hidden and one day it will trigger, it's gone. You will never find it. 
I can't remember how I got to the gym, how I got to the hospital. Uh, when my sisters came to visit me, I don't remember them. They video recorded me and them talking. Then they oh, showed me later so when freaky. I discharged it. This is you talking now, like, oh, I don't remember all that. So I was like, uh, I wasn't there. I was there, but I wasn't there kind mm. of thing, you know. Uh, so after 48 hours of ICU, uh, went down to the neurologist and uh, he had the MRI results. So I said, what does the result show? I said, okay, your brain, uh, we see the scarring. So I said, okay, shit, what does that mean, doctor? It means, and he looked at me deadpan, he said, it means you're using your brain, you're not stupid. He <laughs> 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 meant me as a joke. La. I'll be so angry <laughs> at that point. <laughs> I, like, I look at him, I smile. Is this the time though? <laughs> So I asked him, I said, how long have you been waiting to say that to a comedian? I said, long time. My whole life, give it. And I said, okay, so I'm okay. So yeah, so if your brain was smooth, <laughs> your brain is smooth, you're not using it at all, give it. You are just, you know, it's not being used at all. So I said, oh, okay, okay, so I've been using it. Yeah, yeah, you've been using it. So I said, from my standpoint of view, I can't see anything wrong. Went to the cardiologist and he said, we check your sheets and all that. All we know is that 132 was when you, you know, yeah. you end, but we don't do the test again. We don't want to risk that. So you talk to my trainer, he said, uh, when he goes back to the gym in about a month's time, slowly build him up. But just remember 132 is a thing. But well, within two months, I was reaching 175. I was mm. okay. Mm. Nothing happened. So until now, I still don't know. They still don't know. So what triggered that? So you're probably okay now, right? I don't know because we don't know what caused yeah. what triggered yeah. it. He but said it could have been stress. But like, why did the brain shut down and I lost yeah. my memory for 24 hours? So, yeah. But has it happened since like when you No. Just, so okay. when this radio thing ha started happening, like I couldn't remember what day it is. Yeah. I said, okay, no, I'm not going to push my, my health. Not yeah. worth it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I, I stepped down from radio mm. and uh, just didn't want to- You mentioned the doctor though. The doctor with panic shit, he almost killed Pachukang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just supposed to taste something like that. Yeah. Like, wait, uh, David, my career is writing on this. <laughs> You're gonna do the okay. COVID. Fuck. COVID is coming back <laughs> Nobody will be vaccinated in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> After 2017 happened, right? And 2019, I was in KL. I was mm. doing a PCK show, a one man show. 2,000 people in the convention center. Wow. So the deal was to do a one hour show, right? And I have all these uh, songs and sound bites and what have you on a thumb drive. And I have the first 45 minutes, but I have also some more after that. And I told the, the sound guy, I said, just take my lead like, in case I want to add one more song or whatever. Mm. Coming up to the show, I realized, wow, this PCK show, if I had died that time, this show wouldn't have happened. Mm. Mm. So who knows? Maybe after this PCK show, that same thing will happen, then I'm mm. dead. No other PCK show. So as I, was, I thought I must give a bit more or whatever, but on that day, right, on the stage, after doing about, um, 45 minutes into the show, I stopped and I said, can I have the house lights on please? And I broke character, I spoke as Gurmit. I said, I'm talking like Gurmit now because I want you to know that I'm talking serious now. And I told him this story about the mm, me yeah. dying and all that. So I said, I almost didn't make it for this show. And I said, you know what? Can I just do a bit longer? Mm. <laughs> I suppose do it for one hour only. Can I do a bit longer? No? So that I can give you my all my PCK nurse today yeah. mm. and then if i die i die happy oh, wow. people crying i'm crying someone comes with yeah. a tissue all that then i say yeah so what was supposed to be a 45 minute show I ended up doing three hours wow Whoa. bang for your bucks yeah my gosh. <laughs> oh but wow then after that there was a queue behind backstage for autograph that was another hour mm. wow. so i said okay done man now if yeah. i die i die lah. but at least i've done this then yeah, then COVID came. <laughs> <laughs> then you know, and this is my moment again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <yeah. laughs> you never <laughs> learn. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> 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 <laughs>